Hey guys, wow, we're almost done this school year. Can you believe it? If you don't know me, my name's Sarah. Has it felt like this year has flown by or has it been the slowest year on record? Either way, it has looked so different than we ever could have imagined. Or if we're honest, than we would have ever hoped or probably ever planned. But God showed up. And looking back on it, there were some pretty cool moments for us as a Trinity youth community. Serving outside at Ellen's Acres last summer. Doing youth together on Zoom. Figuring out how to be back in person for in-person youth, pandemic style. <laughs> Epic crew comps challenges. Journeying through the Bible with a story in our small groups at youth and with our families on the weekends. Doing our very first ever online youth retreat. All of the amazing, creative, and intentional ways that you've connected as small groups. Small group leaders, you are amazing. Well, this past week, I spent some time thinking back over this year. The ups, the downs, and what God's taught me in the midst of it. Some of my favorite memories from this past year, seeing a bunch of you at our in-person youth in the fall, our son Emerson being born, ordering movie theater popcorn and doing a movie night watch party with our nephews in Ontario, <laughs> getting chased by a bear. Okay, not fully, but kind of. You'll have to ask me about it sometime. But as I was looking back, I realized that something God taught me this year was that no matter my situation or my circumstances, whether I'm feeling excited and full of hope or like I'm just holding on, that God, he sees me, he's with me and he loves me. I've been following Jesus for a long time and I still need that reminder often. It encourages me, it inspires me, and it gets me excited for what's ahead. What about you? What's a favorite memory from this past year? What's something that you learned? And maybe even a way that God helped you grow. Awesome. I wish I could be with you to hear all of your answers. Now, it's almost summer. My favorite things about summer, <laughs> there's so many. Uh, the sunshine, exploring new beaches and hikes around the Okanagan, time at a park or in the backyard with friends. Growing up, I spent nearly every summer at camp. And when I got too old to be a camper at camp, I started working at camp. Maybe that's true for some of you too, but I made some of my very best memories and met some of my very best friends there. Now this summer, just like this past year, it might look different than we'd ideally hoped it would, but we're going to talk about three ways that we can make the most of it together. But first, here's a couple questions to talk about in your small groups. What are your favorite things about summer? Your favorite places, your favorite foods, your favorite things to do. Talk about it for a few minutes. Okay, love that. Hope you've had a great chance to share. Now, like I said, we're going to look at three simple ways that we can take advantage of this summer. What if we were intentional in how we loved this summer, in how we love God, in how we love our family and our friends, and in how we love our neighbors? More on that in a second. 
One of my all-time favorite passages is in Ephesians chapter 5. Now, the book of Ephesians is in the New Testament, and it's actually a letter written by a guy named Paul who played a huge role in spreading the good news about Jesus. Here's just a couple of verses from the passage, and trust me, it'll give us lots to chew on. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 to 2 from the message paraphrase. Watch what God does and then do it. Like children who learn proper behavior from their parents. Mostly what God does is love you. Keep company with him and learn a life of love. Observe how Christ loved us. His love was not cautious but extravagant. He didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. Love like that. Man, that's so good. Love like that. Now, that would be a great couple of verses to write out and put somewhere that you'll see lots over these next weeks and months. This summer, I want you to pick one of these three challenges. Challenge number one, love God. I love that line from this verse. Mostly what God does is love you. Maybe you need to spend this summer simply being reminded that you are loved by God more than you could ever possibly imagine and discovering what it means to love him too. That might look like spending some time reading your Bible each day listening to worship music, learning to pray, to talk to him, journaling, and asking your small group leaders or the youth team questions along the way. Now, maybe that's something that you're already learning and growing in. That's awesome. Well, challenge number two, love family and friends. Our passage, it says, keep company with him and learn a life of love. Observe how Christ loved us. His love was not cautious, but extravagant. Your challenge? Look for every opportunity to love your family and your friends this summer. And yes, that includes when you don't feel like it, or when your brother or sister is driving you absolutely crazy, or when your mom or dad, they just don't get it. And even when your friend starts to get on your nerves. Challenge number three, this one might be the hardest yet. Love your neighbor. Our passage says he didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. Love like that. See, loving our family and our friends, it can come pretty naturally. Now, sometimes we have to work at it, but we're in each other's right worlds all the time. And usually it makes our world better if we love them well. But this challenge to love our neighbor, well, we'd have to go out of our way and not expect anything in return. We look for ways to reach out to people that we might otherwise overlook. Maybe it's someone that you work with at your summer job, even though they don't always pull their own weight. Maybe it's that kid in your class who moved here during lockdown and they don't know anyone. You could be the one to reach out and invite them to the park with a small group of friends. And how about your literal neighbors, the people who live right beside you? Maybe they're elderly and they could use a hand with their yard this summer. Maybe it's being willing to have a socially distanced chat to see how they're doing because you know they live all alone. See, this summer, while we need to continue to be wise and cautious when it comes to all things pandemic, we don't have to love cautiously. So be reminded that God loves you more than you could ever possibly imagine. And go out of your way to love others as you learn to follow Jesus. We love others because of the crazy love that God first showed us. Now, spend a few minutes talking about which of the three challenges that you could really lean into this summer. 
Or maybe it's all three. One in June, one in July, and one in August. You get the idea. And as a small group, check in with each other throughout the summer to see how it's going. Send a text when you need to and say, guys, can you pray for me? I'm finding it really hard to love my brother today. And take advantage of every opportunity to pray for and encourage each other. And then, of course, celebrate each other when it's going great. Share those stories with each other. And today, wrap up by spending some time sharing prayer requests and praying for each other as you head into the summer. From me and the Trinity Youth Team, have an amazing summer. And we can't wait for all that God has in store. And we really, really can't wait to see you throughout the whole summer, too. Bye, guys. Have a good time chatting and sharing prayer requests and praying. We'll see you soon.